Right, this is Sheila. It's January the 5th, 2009, and I'm just going to put an audio under um, Sandy Merfield's um, part of the tree, because it's Sandy's tree and her husband Graham. They are the grandparents of my granddaughters, and so for, for the sake of my granddaughters, I'm doing the tree, so that they've got a complete tree. And so I've, I'm putting this audio under Sandy because um, she comes from the Dorset area, deep in Dorset. She's got relatives everywhere, ancestors all over the place, oh, which are of course also Amber and Daisy's ancestors, my granddaughters. And um, so anyway, I've come to a part of my journey around the Dorset countryside where I come to a place called Sturminster Newton. And I know Sandy um, lived there at one point, and it's more than likely somewhere in the tree that someone was there, lived there at some point as well. I came across um, the church at Sturminster Newton, and then when I was leaving Sturminster on the outskirts, I came across a, a very large uh, cemetery. It belongs to the council of Sturminster Newton. Um, so, being me, I had to stop and do a bit of scanning because you never know when names are going to surface. So this audio, part one, is um, Sheila's visit to Sturminster Newton in Dorset on behalf of her granddaughters and their grandmother on their paternal side, Sandy Merfield. Right, so here we go. I had a little wander around. I thought I'd find the local church, which I have, and I've just parked up and again, managed to find a free space. And um, so I'm just going to have a little wander around. So I think Sandy said she actually stayed in, um, or lived at the Stirling's Newton once. So en route to Blanford, I thought I'd just well do it, really. I go past it enough times when I used to visit um, Georgia. Because I'm at a film, really, there might be one left in the camera. So off I go, and the time is 5 to 12. <coughs> so there's St Mary's, Sturmans and Newton. Now I'm cutting the grass at the moment. What's a very large, slab like graves. Very old, some of them. Unmarked, but huge. And the back it's got a little church hall. It could be somebody's house. Oh, I don't know, it might be a church hall. There's a slab in, um, embedded in the back of the church. Foundation stone was laid on the 27th of April, 1823 or 5. Also, the church rebuilt and the burial ground enlarged and enclosed at the sole expense of the Reverend Thomas Henry Lane Fox, who died the 21st of November, 1861. Just do a little bit of scanning. One of the stones right behind the church is um, Christian... Goldborn, who died April the 29th, 1764. I think he's aged 33. Also, William, I think it, I said Colborn. I mean, it might be Colborn, Colburn, Colborn. Colborn. He died 1795, aged 77. And William, son of the above, William and Christian Cole, Colborn. I don't think it's a G, it looks more like a C. Died 1819, age 70, and Mary's wife died 1828, age 80. They all lived well, didn't they? And then there's the others that died later in the 1800s. Obviously, the graveyard was enlarged, but at the same time, the stones get removed. This day and age. But you never know, I might come across something. You never know. A very, very large old cedar tree. Must be three or four hundred years old by the look of it. Of course, they're protected trees. The old schoolhouse as well at the back here. Lots and lots of empty spaces, lots of very large gravestones. Great big slabs lying flat on the ground. I mean, they might have had table-like structures. There's one or two of those. But as they collapse, they just put the top slab 
on the floor by the look of it. I think that's what usually happens. The, the thing collapses. Bells are ringing. St. Mary's. I'll take a picture from this angle in a minute. I might not necessarily have to. No, I can't. I've got to save on film. I'm going through to the extended part of the graveyard now. Lots of colour placker and lichen on the gravestones, making them hard to read. Little pussycat looking out of the old schoolhouse window at me. Thinking, what are you doing here? Oh, it's hard to read them. That could be... I know, they're very hard to read these. I'll put the tape back on when I find something. There's a John Strange buried here, but it's very poor, the writing. Can't quite see the date. Could be 1859 or something like that. That's a quite a large... Um, grey slab with a type of cross on it. Most of these are unreadable because of the colour placker in here. Must be a healthy place to live with all this moss and stuff everywhere. Anyway, I'm doing this, like I say, for the Dorset family tree. Um, yeah, there's some very large stones in here. Don't know how far it goes back, but I've got the wrong shoes on, really. I should have put my shoes on for this. I'm walking in grass with nothing on my feet, but I've been having trouble with my feet lately, so I... I get an outbreak every now and again of um, something or other on my feet. Yeah, most of these are very, very hard. You probably could do it if you had time to. James Rose and a George Baker, they're small ones, they're quite readable. But this healthy atmosphere isn't actually good for the stones, because they're kind of placker and lichen like the stone as well. There's one of Harriet Hutchins. She was age 54. She died. Can't quite read the year. Could be 1865. I'm unclear, unsure. This tape's going to run out in a minute. Let me just see who's there. Alan Short here as well. 1875 he died, age 64. John Rothwell Terry died in 1873, age 58. Rose, the name Rose seems common. I found a few of those. Sad old grave that's been forgotten with very rusty railings. Quite a large plot, but not even the stone remains much tacked. There's a little stump coming out of the ground. Important ones for the reading, but forgotten now. Yeah, Robert Rose. It's an unusual name, a John Jeans. I think it's John, or it could be John. It might be, it must be John. John Jeans. It's an unusual name, isn't it? Died in 1868, and Mary Jeans also. A job at Trowbridge, 63 when he died in 1875. William Adams died 1865, age 85. <coughs> cedar tree is probably the biggest cedar tree I've ever seen in my life. It's more like a redwood, it's massive. I might try and take a photo of that because it's so big. Yeah, I've taken a picture of that. That is enormous, that tree. King of the trees, I should say that is. It's massive with its great big tentacles of branches draping down. Huge! I've never seen such a large tree. Well, I probably have, but... but the tape's going to run out now. I'm still at uh, Sturmints and Newton, and there's still a bit of grave to do. And I haven't been inside yet, either. Right, I'm having a fag on the bench at the South St Mary's, in memory of Mary Capel, 1928 to 1988. That's the bench commemorating her. I don't know if I'll put any more on tape, so if this ends in a minute, 
that's why I find it significant, like a, you know, a family name. I won't be going back to the van to get another tape, but I'll be starting when we hit the road again in a minute. But it's a lovely church, I'm amazed by the size of the tree. There's lots of very large slabs, uh, mainly old ones, there's probably a uh, cemetery somewhere I should imagine. There's no new graves here, these are all old, so somewhere about there will be a cemetery. Um, but I don't think I'll be looking for that particularly because there's no one that Sandy has mentioned who's been buried in um, here, but somebody could turn up, see, I mean. Right, I'm going to continue this on the another audio, which will be part two. Um, because the, I've got to turn the tape over for the other side where I continue and then I go on where I discover the the cemetery on the outskirts of um, Sturminster Newton um, I'm going to try and find out more information from Sandy regards her um, link with Sturminster Newton I, I need to tape her really because she's got lots of bits of information that could be useful so over and out now until part two